The OLP's national executive this week decided to override rank-and-file pre-selection to secure endorsement for former Premier Nathan Rees in Toongabby and Tourism Minister Jodie McKay in Newcastle. There was speculation that Jodie McKay may not contest the seat of Newcastle in the March state election. Her decision to stand means she will now face a tough battle to retain the seat. Her main opponent will be Newcastle Lord Mayor, the independent John Tate. But Mr Tate has problems of his own. In the last week, he has faced calls for his resignation as Lord Mayor and claims that he forced out the council's general manager. John Tate says it's all part of a smear campaign organised by the Labor Party. Giselle Wakatama reports. For some time now, all has not been well in Newcastle City Hall. There are people around who will use whatever little piece of information, uh, innuendo, anything that they can dream up to discredit me. The Newcastle Council is deeply divided and for several months tensions have boiled over between the Lord Mayor John Tate and the Council's General Manager Lindy Hyam. I think it's a crying shame, in fact a disgrace, that uh, she's lost to the city because of the antics of a grubby sociopath. And the fact that the General Manager has resigned and we're still having the same, we possibly will still have the same leader um, for the next two years of that General Manager, they probably would send alarm bells. That's my opinion, um, and I think, again, it just adds to one of the reasons why I think the, the Lord Mayor needs to consider his resignation. The battle raging inside Council reached dramatic proportions last Friday when Ms Hyam announced she would be resigning. Councillors say she turned Council's finances around and some blame the Lord Mayor for bullying her out of her job. To those who do not want her in this role, we say... You have lost our confidence and perhaps it is time to reassess your position as well. Lindy Hyam told staff she was leaving for a job that was too good to refuse. I wouldn't want to stand in a way. It's her right to, uh, to choose another occupation, another vocation, and that's what she's doing. While her resignation caused outrage among some of the elected councillors, not everyone was unhappy with the news. For nearly 12 months, Newcastle residents have been fighting the council over three controversial developments. At the beachside reserve of Empire Park, council has begun construction of a skate park. I think the process for developing this skate park has been uh, appalling. Uh, council trying to use exempt development is inappropriate um, and not involving the community, the local residents and the sporting groups that, that use Empire Park, um, I think is just plain wrong. And at Novocastrian Park, 25 metre floodlights have been erected. I'm trying to grow a tree in the middle of the backyard to try and mask it all. I've got hedge growing up. I've put plants in the way. I'm just trying to mask it all out, not use it at all. I believe the mounting evidence of maladministration by Newcastle City Council is so profound as to constitute an abuse of power that is eroding the very tenets of our democracy. And I think throughout New South Wales, we need to ask ourselves, do we really want to darken our democracy to light up a park? The developments were assessed by the council under a state planning rule which allows the council to fast-track projects. It was initially being dealt with, as I said, as exempt development because it was a sporting facility. In discussion with the community, uh, issues were raised. Council took those issues on board and had a look at those issues. But there were concerns the council had applied the rules on these developments incorrectly, concerns that were validated in October by a letter from New South Wales Planning. The department has reviewed the State Environmental Planning Policy Infrastructure 2007 and agrees that the skate park facility is not exempt development. The skate park facility is covered by the definition of an outdoor recreational facility. The council confirmed last week the facility has been reclassified to allow for more assessment. It's not unusual to be working on a range of issues where you're not sure what is the actual planning procedure. John Tate now wants an external assessment of the planning process. I think uh, what we need to do is restore confidence in council processes. Now, whether it was handled correctly or could have been handled better is something other people should have the opportunity to assess. The Mayor is also worried that morale in council is at an all-time low. 
I can well imagine some uh, people describing it as toxic. Uh, the EEO uh, survey uh, was mentioned and it did highlight uh, an amount of bullying. I had 180 submissions from staff about things that they believed hadn't been or needed to be addressed in the organisation and we've set about addressing those and many of those were in relation to the previous management of the organisation. John Tate's concerns about the council's general manager are in contrast to the public statement he released announcing her resignation. Lindy Hyam was hired as general manager with a mandate for change and she certainly delivered. The organisation has had strong financial results with significant efficiencies achieved. The whole organisation has been strengthened as a modern, flexible and capable organisation. I've been asked by all the councillors behind and around me to make a statement on their behalf. Earlier this week, several councillors threatened to bring on a no-confidence motion against the mayor. That threat has since been withdrawn, but it's left John Tate in no doubt about the broader agenda of his political opponents. I'm privy to information about uh, the activity of the, uh, the Newcastle member in respect to political uh, to and fro. I'm not prepared to talk about that openly and publicly. But what I would say is this, there is a very high tension political situation in Newcastle. It revolves around the state election. State Line approached the state Newcastle member, Jodie McKay, for a response, but she declined. You look at the relationships between the uh, elected leaders at three levels of government in this city, Lord Mayor, state member, federal member, <laughs> they don't talk to each other. But that's not a great situation for the city. John Tate has called for an extraordinary meeting of council on Monday night. He says he's prepared to ask for the council to be sacked if the infighting doesn't stop. This is not about me keeping my job. It's about the city of Newcastle having a council that will function, not a council that is dysfunctional. So I don't resolve from that, and that may happen any time within the, next, the rest of this, this term. It's not just something that I've said the other day and will fall away. If, if ever I perceive the council is dysfunction, I'll be going straight to the Minister and the Division of Local